everyone, welcome back to Stone Beast Studio. Today, I'm going to be recapping and reviewing Inside Out Movie Review. Let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, before I get started, just a couple of quick announcements to make. First of all, if you can please subscribe to my channel, I'm trying to reach a goal, a goal of hitting 200 subscribers before the end of 2020. I think this goal is possible if you guys all subscribe down below. And you can suggest content in the um, comment box, and I will consider doing it. Uh, we have a lot of new videos coming out soon. Zooey Mama podcast. We have... Um, more which is betters, rubber doll reviews, we have some games coming up, and we have, um, of course, just regular Wimpy Studio stuff, book and book reviews and movie reviews, and it's going to be a lot of fun just to have a lot of new content on here, so if you can please comment down below or like it, so then I know that you like what I'm talking about, I will really, really appreciate it, and if you can comment on your feelings about Inside Out, I'll really appreciate it. Follow me on Wimpy Studio Gang, Instagram, Patreon, Twitch, and more. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, so we're going to talk about my review first. I've been doing these lately with my um, reviews. I talk about my I, I talk about my review of it first before getting into like plot details and all that kind of stuff. So, Inside Out is a fun, happy film with emotions of joy, fear, disgust, sadness, and anger. These emotions bring out a person's real feelings from the brain, which is very important in real life. Inside Out brings a sense of adventure to the film and explores each of the emotions from inside the head. It's a great film. Make sure you check it out. So kind of breaking it down in this review, it's exactly what it sounds like. Inside Out is about a person who, um, a regular girl, and it shows all the emotions playing inside her brain. They control something, it controls the way that they act. So it's pretty much whatever Joy does. If Joy does something, Riley's going to be happy. If Anger does something, Riley's going to be mad. If Sadness does something, uh, Sadness is going to be sad. You get it? So that's kind of like what? It's like the these little, like, Creatures inside of her brain are controlling her actions. I think that that is awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the characters to begin with. So there are five simple characters in Inside Out. Um, Joy is the leader of the pack and is happy and joyful as always. Um, she pretty much shows everyone the ropes and she's just such a joy to see. <laughs> Sadness is the sad one in the pack. She's always sad and makes wrong decisions. However, she has a way important part in the film than the other three down below. A uh, fear, the fear for one in the pack. He is always worried about Riley's safety. Disgust, the disgusting one in the pack. He doesn't really care about Riley at all. Anger is the angry one in the pack. He tries to make Riley as angry as possible. So you can see, joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger. Now, I feel like joy and sadness and anger and are the most important. I understand fear, but disgust doesn't really make any sense as an emotion. Like, it wasn't really needed besides maybe like broccoli. See, I think it was just there for fun, but... I think that the main, main emotions you need to have are joy, sadness, and probably fear over anger. But like I feel like I understand that you have to have anger. But I guess each of the emotions are are important in their own way. Um, so you, you can comment down below what your favorite character in Inside Out is. So we're gonna kind of get into the plot and break it down. So pretty much the film starts with Riley's adventures growing up in Minnesota. Um, she plays hockey and it snows a lot there, so she has a lot of fun there with her playing her hockey with her parents. She pretty much has a life there, but she has to move to San Francisco when her dad gets a new job. She's forced to fit in and make new friends and just do a new form and with all five emotions in her head, they all go different directions. So, pretty much, if I was going to break down this completely, which I'm not going to, um, but it's pretty much a girl moving and she has to deal with a new area. It's pretty much... It, we've seen that in a lot of movies, but there is a twist, the whole brain thing. If it was just that, that would be kind of boring because we've seen that thing a million times in other movies, but this was a little bit different. This introduced emotions controlling her actions, and the whole school scene, and like, there, it, maybe it was a little bit too dramatic in some cases, but I thought that mostly it was a really great uh, setup, how they have the whole emotions thing, and the new move thing, so I really did enjoy that. So pretty much, sadness touches a core memory, causing all of Riley's favorite memories to be shut down. From there, sadness and joy go on an epic adventure to get the places running again. So, yeah, pretty much when all the places are down, this includes, like, amusement parks and, like, different, like, hockey places, Riley gets sad. It's all about what's inside her brain. So, pretty much, they can't, because when Sadness touches a core memory, those memories, those memories don't get, they're all gone. So, like, now Riley's going to be upset, They so they have to get her happy again, so then they have to go on the, this whole adventure. And the main being Bog, Riley is an imaginary friend, and I really love this adventure sequence. I love how, because it brings someone who's, Joyful to bring someone who's sad. Now, I'm glad that they did this because I feel like sadness is there is a very important character in this film. Not only because I mean, her she's sad and that brings like some, 
I, I don't know, it gives some, brings some stakes to it, but I don't know, but I do really enjoy, uh, I did really enjoy that kind of part of it. I feel like Sanis is such an important character in this film, and you can comment down below if you agree, because, I don't know, but I'm glad that they kind of brought joy and sadness to this. Um, so they try to catch a train, but it, this is halted when Anger tries to get Riley to run away to Minnesota, and I did not like this part. And I'll be talking about that in my episode awards in a second. Uh, but by the end of the movie, uh, the places are running again, and everyone is friends and getting along, because every movie ends with a happy ending, and I think that kind of proves that it's supposed to be a one-time movie, with the exception of some films. Um, I'll talk about a sequel later, but again, I really love, I pretty much love every part in this film. It it really brings joy to me, and um, and all the emotions bring different emotions to me. It's a sad film, but it's also a fun film, so that is my plot details talking about it. Okay, so we're going to talk about my uh, movie awards really quick. My favorite moment is Joy and Sadness making up. Um, I like that friendship, and I feel like even though Sadness is a little bit, like, too sad, I feel like her uh, sadness with Joy's energy is a good dynamic together. My least favorite moment is Anger trying to get Riley to run away in Minnesota. I did not like that part. My favorite characters are Joy and Sadness. Least favorite character, Anger, and Disgust. Overall, grade an 8 plus. I love this movie. It has such a deep meaning, and it shows how all your emotions are controlled by people in your brain. Lol. Okay, so those are my episode awards, and uh, you can, like, replay them if you want, but... Uh, will there be a sequel? As much as I would love a sequel, I'm not sure it's possible. The story seems finished, and it seemed like a one-time gig. I would love to see some comics written about it, though. Um, a lot of um, uh, franchises, when they end something, they typically write a comic about it. So I think that would be awesome if they wrote a, a comic about it instead of wasting all of our time into a m new movie that might not do that good because I love comic book series. I think that that's a lot of fun. So um, uh, let me know your opinions on Inside Out and what movies I should review next. Currently, I have said to review Zootopia, Mr. Peabody, and Sherman, and the new Phineas and Ferb movie that's coming out at the end of the month. But I would love suggestions for what to do in September, October, November, and I'm going to be doing Christmas movies in December, but I'll put up a poll about that. So... Pretty much, suggest any movie besides Phineas and Ferb, the new Phineas and Ferb movie, Zootopia, and Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Next week I have Zootopia, week after I have Mr. Peabody and Sherman, and then I have the Phineas and Ferb movie, so yeah. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be posting my Roger Cross book review for the Zooey Mama podcast. Wednesday I have a Disney Plus versus Netflix, which is better, which will be fun. Uh, Thursday I have, um, wait, Wednesday I'll either, when, uh, Thursday I'll have Riverdale Season 1 Episode 4 review. Friday, Choose Your Adventure Game, and Saturday, then and now, Columbus, Indiana, book review. Anyways, I want to thank everyone for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on post notifications, and never miss an upload. Follow me on One Piece Studio Gang, Patreon, Instagram, Twitch, and more. Thanks so much for watching this video, and...